Hi everybody, uh, Casey Cox here with Sports Science Solutions. Uh, just wanted to talk a little bit today um, about some of the research that we're conducting. Um, had a lot of people asking about some of the stuff that we've been accomplishing over the last four to six months, um, and a lot of it has been pretty interesting. So I just wanted to give you a brief uh, touch and uh, see exactly uh, some of the stuff that we're working on. Um, so obviously, um, as most of you know, we're doing biomechanical research. Um, for human motion and what that means is for most of the time um, we're taking a deeper look um, into a lot of the theories and things that we've uh, been taught our entire lives um, in either disproving or um, you know finding validity in the things that we've taught all along so it's been pretty interesting and um, I just want to give you a little quick peek a little taste uh, on what exactly uh, that some of that looks so like. So here we're taking a peek um, at a basic skating stride okay so this is actually uh, a graphical depiction of what it looks like for a hockey player to just be making a forward stride or a forward sprint. Um, so these are actually hip accelerations that we're measuring here. Um, so these are three-dimensional movements of hip acceleration, um, which looks like a lot of craziness and a lot of uh, just random motion here. Um, but if I start to take away some of these um, configurations, you'll see a little bit closer to what we're talking about here. So I'm going to remove just one of the components we're not especially considering here. Um, and you'll see we've start to get a little bit more um, clarity to what we're looking at here. Um, so basically, I'm going to eliminate um, the blue lines here for a second and let you just look at the reds. Um, so this red line is actually showing hip acceleration um, in the X direction. So that would be to either the immediate left or immediate right of the skater as they're moving. Um, so these peaks are interesting because we're going to want to try to balance these with these blue peaks. Okay, so if I take, just put the blue peaks on, uh, this is the z-axis, so this is actually measuring straight backwards. Um, so if we wanted to measure um, a hockey player's stride, and we wanted to see if they were making a quote-unquote perfect 45-degree stride, what we look at is to see um, if these peaks and valleys are actually balanced with each other. Um, for as long as they are not, then we know that the stride is not 45 degrees. Um, if the z-axis and the x-axis are completely balanced, then we know that what we're looking at is actually a 45 degree stride. Um, which is pretty interesting. Um, so you can see here, this is actually pretty good. Um, for every stride he's making, I would say he's a little bit more um, moving to his left or his right than he is going back. He's striding, you could say, more of a 40 degree stride here. Um, but it's pretty interesting. Um, these are the types of things we're able to look at. Um, take a deeper look at the biomechanics and see exactly how our player is moving, um, which gives us a really good idea of how to uh, treat that player and train them going forward. Uh, so I hope this is interesting, and uh, we'll be posting more stuff as we find out um, through our research phase. Thanks for watching.